Welcome to my channel. Today I will tell you about Eiffel Tower. Today, it is impossible to imagine Paris without the Eiffel Tower, and most Parisians have at least learned to tolerate it, if not love it. But this wasn't always the case. Once it was constructed, many residents were strongly offended and thought it was extremely out of place. For instance, Hugo and Maupassant insisted that the tower be removed from the streets of Paris on numerous occasions. The tower was supposed to be demolished in 1909, 20 years after it was built, but because to its enormous commercial success, it was given the title of perpetual residence however, the majority of tourists still adored the Eiffel Tower. It is still the tallest building in Paris and the fifth tallest building in all of France after 120 years. Despite its enormous size, the tower weighs less than 10,000 tons overall, presses the ground with a force comparable to that of a person sitting in a chair, and would only be 6 centimeters tall if all the metal inside it solidified into a single block. However, because technology is advancing, a similar structure today would require three times less meta the only nation with a 300-meter flagpole will be Frank Albert Eve Parisian who is most patriot Hitler intended to climb the Eiffel Tower when he visited Paris during the German occupation. Hitler's wish, however, was not granted since the elevator broke down just in time, preventing him from leaving with anything. The Germans spent four years attempting to fix the elevator after that embarrassing incident. In vain, German artisans were unable to comprehend the system, and the French could only shrug their shoulders if there were no spare parts. However, the elevator miraculously functioned in 1944, just a few hours after Paris was liberated and it continues to function normally to the brown if it's strange that the Eiffel Tower is presumably the only building in the world to have its patented color, Eiffel Brown, which gives the tower a bronze color. It had previously been various shades of yellow, red-brown, and ochre. The tower has lately undergone 19 paintings, one every seven years. The tower continues to get heavier over time as each painting operation requires roughly 60 tons of paint, along with about 1,500 brushes and 2 hectares of safety mesh. Not only is it getting heavier, but it is also getting taller thanks to the new antennas. At 324 meters right now, it is still far from the DP L Y ISIL. L. Contrary to what might initially appear, the Eiffel Tower is not at all monochrome. From the darkest on the first level to the lightest on the third, it is painted in three different tones of bronze. This is done to improve the tower's aesthetic balance with the sky. Everyone can purchase a piece of the Eiffel Tower, and we don't just mean souvenirs bearing its picture, we're talking about the exact original Iron Lady that has belonged to a private corporation since Gustav Eiffel's time and whose shares are sold on the stock exchange. Is there a more well-known and recognizable landmark in the world than Gustav Eiffel's famed tower? The enormous metal tower known as the Eiffel Tower, which is situated in Paris's 7th arrondissement, is regarded as a marvel of both architecture and engineering. Today, it serves as a genuine representation of France for travelers from throughout the globe. This landmark, which is truly the pride of the Parisians, has rapidly risen to the top spot among paid attractions worldwide. For the 1889 Paris World's Fair, the Eiffel Tower was constructed between 1887 and 1889, showcasing French technological prowess and commemorating the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. The tower is very large at first glance, it is 324 meters tall and made up of 18,038 metal components that require 2,500,000 rivets to assemble. There is no disputing the Iron Lady's magnificence. The Eiffel Tower held the title of world's highest skyscraper for a considerable amount of time before the Chrysler skyscraper in New York City was built there in 1930. One of Paris' most breathtaking views draws long lines of tourists. The view of Paris's buildings and tourist sites is stunning from the tower's second floor. 
It is worth appreciating the fine food presented in a trendy design setting at the renowned restaurant Jules Verne, Lou Jules Verne. The most daring climb to the Eiffel Tower is third level, where you can almost touch the clouds and take in a 360 degree view of the city. A glass of champagne can be ordered by anyone here. The tower has an incredible ambience, and the clear floor imparts a special sense of lightness. Children will adore the enjoyable booklets with riddles that will instruct them in the background of the Iron Lady and provide them with a fun approach to unravel some of her mysteries. For five minutes at the start of every hour, until one in the morning, in the evening, the tower is changed with golden illumination. The Champ de Mars, which affords a striking perspective of the tower itself, is located at the base of the Eiffel Tower. You can stroll around here or actually have a picnic. The Maison des Invalides, another famous site in Paris, is not far from the Eiffel Tower. From Berhakheim Station, you can travel on foot, on bicycle, by boat, by bus, or by subway to get to the tower. Throughout its history, the Eiffel Tower has also seen some bizarre events, such as a mountain climber in 1954 and two Englishmen using his parachute in 1984. A journalist rode a bicycle down from the first floor in 1923. Even if it had a bumpy start, it is now well acknowledged and belongs on the list of icons of Paris. Subscribe and like my channel. I'm happy to try for you. See you in the next video.